at the SEM Research Center for Molecular Medicine of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, researchers from the team of Giulio Supriti Ferga have unraveled a code of how cellular lipids are co-regulated and organized. Their findings of two studies published in Cell and Cell Reports on June 18, 2015 further show that the cellular lipid composition is predictive of inflammatory responses. So lipid composition affects the biophysical and biochemical properties of membranes uh, in cells and these membranes serve as platforms for receptor mediated signaling. So what we wanted to know when I joined Julio's lab was how how does innate immune signaling actually inf is influenced by um, membrane lipid composition? We perform genetic perturbations of genes located in the sphingolipid metabolic network in mouse macrophages. And this we combined with the quantitative readout of different steps in toll-like receptor signaling. And when we did this, we actually identified several genes that were uh, located in the sphingolipid metabolic network, but also could be um, involved in a pro- or anti-inflammatory response. But to further dissect which lipids in particular are actually involved in these processes, we decided to perform mass spectrometry-based lipidomics. What the quantitative lipidomics showed us was that each of the individual genetic perturbations led to a unique lipid state. And when we analyzed which lipids um, moved together in abundance over these different perturbations, we could see that certain lipids went up, certain lipids went down altogether. This was organized and this is what we call lipid co-regulation. When we visualize this lipid, lipid co-regulation as a, as a network, we strikingly found that this makes a near perfect circular network. Um, by making use of other sources from previous studies, what we know about lipid metabolism, lipid localization, we find that this circular network nicely reflects uh, lipid metabolism. So using human data, we could show that the lipid co-regulatory network that we identified in mice is actually conserved in human. The measurements of inflammation upon these genetic perturbations allowed us to, for each individual lipid species, assign a pro or anti-inflammatory role. The fascinating result came when we used these unbiased inflammatory annotations for each of these individual lipid species to predict the inflammatory state of the patient-derived fibroblast cell. And we found that we could actually very accurately predict the inflammatory state of these diverse patient samples. Imagine our excitement when this circle of lipids automatically popped up on the screen of Perrin Snyder. And we all gathered in the lab to watch it. And initially we were skeptical, right? I mean, maybe this is an artifact. But in fact, it is a natural way by which regulation of lipids occur, presumably reflecting some sort of intrinsic metabolic relationships. Colleagues who first saw um, these pictures say, hey, this means there is a lipid code. And yes, there is a lipid code. And this is um, a great, let's say, offer for the future to say, eventually, we'll be able to understand the function of, of, the function of each individual lipid on this, on this map. Because there must be a reason why they are co-regulated according to these patterns. And if you want, we have the key for it. And we have all reasons to believe that, like, the Krebs cycle or urea cycle, there may be something intrinsic to metabolism that makes this transformation of matter part of how biochemistry is organized. So we did get goosebumps. So based on the analysis of Marielle and Parent, one particular enzyme caught our interest, which is called SMPDL3B. So this enzyme is related to another uh, protein involved in lipid metabolism called uh, acid sphingomyelinase. However, it's rather poorly characterized. So what we could find is that this protein is expressed on macrophages and uh, further upregulated in the course of inflammatory processes. Using uh, different experimental approaches, including lipidomics analysis and membrane fluidity measurements, we could really show that also this other protein, smpdl 3 b is involved in lipid metabolism. And most importantly, our findings could show that this protein acts as a negative regulator of toll -like receptors. And we think that it does so by modulating the cellular lipid composition. As lipids play a role in many, many biological processes, they also play a role in many diseases. We know of neurodegenerative diseases that, have, that rely on the fact that some lipids are not performing properly. So the hope that we have is that if you want this Rosetta Stone of lipid organization will help us crack some of the long-standing problems in some diseases 
where lipid metabolism is involved. And you know, if we're bold, we can say because metabolism is linked in total, this may actually shed light on a great number of both cellular conditions and diseases. So we're very excited about this. Mm -hmm.